the Dr. Cherie podcast. I'm really glad you tuned in today because I have a really super terrific guest. She's a professional, she's a friend, she's an author, she's just a lot of things. And so I'm going to read you her bio because I can't sum it up in any sentence what she is. So I'm just going to tell you about Gina Maresha. She is the creator of the unique cabbie approach and it's a it's a leadership impact model that she's created by herself and she's developed it over many many years um, she is my book co-author and collaborator and we have put together this great book that you will see right behind me it's there the cabbie model she's been using for over 20 years in major corporations throughout asia pacific europe and north america and her purpose has always been to be a catalyst she loves challenges, and she likes to predict leadership, fundamentally shifting teams and cultures. She founded Catalyst Consulting, HK for Hong Kong, in 2004 as a platform to enable professionals to find their unique leadership voice. That's important. She advocates moral and business imperatives for inclusive workplaces. She leads a team of Catalyst associates and coaches and collaborates with partners around the world, me included. Gina has written and developed hundreds of customized Catalyst leadership programs with Fortune 500 companies and private clients. Impactful Leadership is her first official book in print. And so that's this hand with this book, Impactful Leadership, Unlock Your Powers with Cabbie. We're going to talk about that book today. and We're going to talk a little bit more about why we wrote the book and and what Gina wants to accomplish with it, et cetera. But since 1990, Gina's practiced as a transformational leadership consultant, organizational psychology practitioner. She's a certified facilitator, executive coach for 18 years, inclusive advocate and speaker. She's an entrepreneur who has co-founded three other companies. And she's originally from Cape Town, South Africa. She's lived in Hong Kong since 97, held regional leadership roles, such as vice president for a global bank, Change Leadership Consultant for Accenture, Leadership Joint Venture Consultant for American and European firms expanding their business into Asia, and her pro bono leadership and work supports NGOs that focus on women and young professionals. Jean is an avid hiker who lives between her homes in Hong Kong, fishing village, little fishing village in Hong Kong, can you imagine that, and an Italian lake with her husband and her two children. So please join me today in giving a warm welcome to Gina. Maresha, my friend, my co-author, and today my guest on Dr. Cherie's podcast. Welcome, Gina. Cherie, thank you so much. You are, for me, my catalyst sister in the world. And oh. thank you for an amazing introduction. I think what I want to just say up front, all of those things for your listeners or possibly even the readers of our book, they simply labels. They're simple labels which allow me to live my purpose in this world. And that is ultimately to really ensure that in my lifetime, I can impact a more inclusive, diverse leadership voice in the world. So being a coach, a facilitator, a trainer, a mother is, is just a means to an end. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy to be on the Dr. Cherie show. Well, that's great. And we're just getting started now. So we have a lot of ground to cover. So Gina, tell us initially the whole concept of CABI. Tell us where mm. that came from, what it stands for, what it means to you. And don't worry if I jump in and interrupt you because mm. my questions can't hold themselves. So go for it. Where did Cabby come from? Okay, so Cabby came from the work that I was doing. So I was paid, I mean, the privilege of being paid by organizations to help them answer a question. What does leadership look like for our organization now, today, and in the future? And because of my background in organizational psychology, I was in fortunate roles to be able to do that. However, Cabby began to emerge because like any good consultant or coach, we ask questions. And I started asking three why questions. That basically was like, why are we actually defining leadership for you? What does leadership actually do? If we define, develop leaders in your organization today and for tomorrow, what's the purpose and the impact? The second question is, why is it that so many people are being trained in leadership 
communication skills, presentation skills, impact and presence, media training. And yet what I saw time and time again, people did not have a voice at work. My third yes, okay. very quickly, is why is it that there isn't a diverse leadership voice in the world? So those three whys had me start asking questions. What is leadership? What is leadership impact? Okay, so when you say they didn't have a voice, what does that mean? I'm going to say something a little bit uh, provocative here. But often in organizations, I would literally walk in and I could smell the fear. Hmm. I could actually see that we would have 10 people around the table and there would only be one or two voices. I would interview, work with a diverse range of people. And this started off in South Africa. And then when I was working for Accenture, more international firms. And what I still saw was that there often was a single voice and a single way of viewing the world and what the organization did. And quite frankly, it just wasn't sustainable. Okay. So what does CABI stand for? So CABI stands for, the C in CABI is confidence and courage. I absolutely believe that we needed to work with individuals' inner worlds, the essence of who they say they are, their confidence in being able to discover and find their voice. A stands for articulating with impact. I mean, if you cannot string a sentence together and you cannot get heard or listened to, it just all falls apart. B is branding. And that's being able to elevate your profile in a truly authentic way that is in alignment with what you stand for. And it's coming from a human perspective, not a product perspective. And what I love about the cabbie model and branding is we really flip the script on that. And often what I say and what I see is that people will be fine 70 to 80% this time with the C, the A, and the B, confidence and courage, articulating with impact, and branding or elevating your profile. But often what happens in leadership models and impact and presence models is they forget the other 20%. And that's where I comes in. I stands for inquiry. And what we've seen is that when the unexpected happens, you need something else. You need something else. And the, the C and the B won't cut it. But inquiry and adopting in the moment an attitude of curiosity will help to recenter, reground, so that you can find your voice and remain congruent and present. So CAB so stands you, for that. So what do you do to, let's do the voice thing. What do you do to help people find their voice? Okay. The very first thing that we always do is start with a why question and something deeply personal and individual. Like, And we ask the question, like, what do you need to have a voice around? There was a what what do you care was. about? Those are two what questions. You said why question. So I'm trying to figure yes. out. Because so, the why question that you start with about voice is yes. why... Why what? Why do you need to have a voice? Oh, okay. And, and what do people say? And what people say about that is, well, I'm kind of not sure. So what we do is we go back and we just say to them, all right, let's start with, if we're working with uh, people in organizations, what's your role? What's your purpose in your role? What are you paid to do? Why did you even take on this role? Where's the opportunity for you? And so sometimes using their role to begin to define, oh, okay, well, I'm paid to have a voice around A, B, and C. Then what I'll do is I'll also ask them, what do you care about? Actually, what gets you up in the morning? Does mm -hmm. anything inspire you? Is there anything that makes you mad? Is there anything that makes you excited? And what is that? Okay, so... Give me three examples of answers that people give you when you ask them, you know, why are you doing what you're doing and why is your role important to you or whatever? Just tell me, what do people answer off the top? Three examples. Okay, so three examples of the type of things I hear is often they haven't been asked that question. 
So what I'll hear is, and it depends obviously where, where people are, they early in their career, mid, etc. But essentially what they'll do is they will say to me, oh, I need to achieve the following results, or I need to lead a team. Sounds or, like KPIs. To, yeah. So they will often start with the KPIs, mm -hmm. but at least it's a starting point. So they give you a starting point with their KPIs because that's what they know yeah. and that's familiar to them and it's accessible. But then you dig exactly. deeper. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we dig deeper and we say, all right, so when we look at this, um, sometimes what I do is I say to them, all right, if you look at in six months time, six months time, when you look back, what else would you like to say that you have achieved? And often what will then begin to bubble to the surface would be things like, well, I've supported my team. I've enabled customers to actually see things in a slightly different way. And all of a sudden you will actually see the energy changing. And it begins, we begin to then talk about what are the things that really actually perhaps inspire them things that are starting to come to the surface around why they do what they do. Cool. So I want to jump around a little bit now because that sounds very uplifting and inspiring. Mm. But, you know, a lot of people in corporations don't have a lot of confidence and courage. We know that. So it seems like that would there'd be a lot of work for you to do there. Is there a gender difference? And how do you teach confidence and courage? So the first thing we do is we actually come at it from a completely different angle. We don't say people need to develop confidence. I think that that is a myth. It's one of the biggest myths that have held women back from leadership positions. It is a common myth that women don't have the confidence to excel into leadership positions. We know from research, it's a myth. And the reason why it's a myth is because of what you touched on. Often women have a different explanatory style. Mm -hmm. So for example, very practically, many women, when asked the question, what are you good at? or Why should you be promoted? Will spend both the majority of the airtime plus the sequencing of what they're talking about, focusing on what they are not good at, what they still need to develop. Whereas what we see with men is they focus immediately on what they're good at and they spend at least 70, 80% of the time talking about what they're good at. This is not because women aren't good at anything or they are not ready for <laughs> senior roles. It's because the explanatory style is different. And in a corporate world that has always been generally male dominated, the listening sure. and the narrative in that organization has people walk away concluding and judging that that person lacks confidence. Okay, so I just, I missed something here because I heard you say that men focus on their strengths and they explain themselves according to their strengths. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What's women's explanatory style? The explanatory style tends to be to focus on the 20% that they are still developing. And it comes first. It's, we call it the primacy effect. So that's the first thing they talk about, even when they are asked, what are your strengths? I see this time and time again. And in the many interviews that I often do, when organizations ask me to come in, they're about to make an offer or a promotion often to an MD level, I will ask women who are already operating at a managing director level, who are really senior, who are really effective, and they will highlight to me what they still need to develop and why they're not quite ready. Why is that the case? Why do women focus on why they're not ready? You know, it's really interesting. I think it's a combination of one, just being honest and putting things out on the table. And I think it's also internally what goes on is the inner critic voice that perhaps oh. is dominant and the spotlight is on that. They might think like, gosh, I don't want to misrepresent myself. So I'll make certain that they know the things exactly. that I'm not capable of doing 
because I don't want them to come back and say, you told us you could do this and you can't. So they want to be full on ethical, honest, integrous, and put it out there everything they can't do. But it shoots mm. them in the foot. Mm. And even when it doesn't always happen where women are highlighting what I'm not good at, what they're highlighting is what I'm still developing. Oh. And instead of that being one or two sentences succinct, they over explain that. And it lands up in the airtime they have dominating. Oh, that's really fascinating. That yeah. And that you found this consistently on three continents, is that right? Yeah. In Africa, in Europe, and also in Asia, is that true? Absolutely. Interestingly enough, I never thought in an American headquartered investment bank, right, or in US and UK law firms, that I would see this playing out with women. What do you do to help change that behavior that seems so ingrained globally? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we do in the book and we do in our cabbie coaching and workshops is to look at the concept of confidence. And instead of putting the spotlight on, oh, you need to develop confidence or you need to project more confidence we say actually both to men and women you are already confident okay let's not work on what is apparently lacking if you can absolutely embrace that it is your birthright to be confident you have this reservoir of confidence however there are times where you have and both you and I refer to this frame this we frame it this way as confidence leaks depending mm. on situations and stakeholders. So what we do is we work on the other two pillars. We work on self-trust and we work on courage because guess what? Putting the focus on that enables anybody, regardless of culture, even gender, to be able to more consistently not only be perceived as confident, but to experience confidence. Okay, so I want to move a little bit beyond the training into the actual book. And there is a reason that you really wanted to write this book. And, mm. you know, writing a book is easier said than done, as you know <laughs> very well. So tell us about the inspiration or the motivation that got you to write the book. Absolutely. Okay, so when you and I first met, you challenged me and you said to me, Gina, really, so what is your mission? What is your purpose? And I said, my purpose in life from a, from a young child has been to make a difference. And I began to articulate and use that word, be a catalyst, when I was a teenager and a student in an apartheid South Africa that was in a state of emergency. And I was studying history and organizational psychology. And so you asked me when I came to you in my 40s, is your purpose still to be a catalyst? And I said, absolutely. And you said, and then how, what does that look like? And I said, well, it is to make a difference to a more diverse leadership voice, voice in the world. And then you challenged me and you said, well, where have you done that in the last 25 years, Gina? And I said, actually, this cabbie model and the work I do around resilience and I approach around assessing leaders is where I think I've made the biggest difference. And we started talking about the cabbie model. And you helped me get in touch and in tune with the stories of people, very diverse people, who over the last decade or so had found access to their unique potential through their voice and through that discovered their leadership and was making a difference. And so I committed to then share this cabbie model beyond Catalyst, beyond myself, beyond my small constituents and one of the things that you asked me, I'll never forget, you said, okay, so Gina, so what's the first step in all of this? Because as a phenomenal coach, it is around action and taking action. And I said, well, I have a licensed program and I probably need to write a book. And that book can share the stories of people who have found their voice so that mm. other coaches, trainers, managers, leaders, individuals can get access. Here, this is the book we're talking about. 
Now you are the prime mover in making this book become reality. This has been your dream. And when I said I would be delighted to co-author it with you, it was because I didn't have a book on leadership. And yeah. there's the word right there, impactful leadership. And we're using your model right here, the cabbie mm -hmm. model, which we're talking about confidence and courage, articulating with impact, branding, and the final I is inquiry. Now, this book, I think it's really beautifully put together and it's a tribute to you uh, to look at the, the way the pages are laid out and designed. It's very easy to read and you have a wonderful little key in the book you have here, reflect and exercise. That's mm. a couple of them. And then you have also, oh, fun. This page here tells us what we're looking yeah. at at the moment. C-A-B-I yeah. and which, which ones at which time. Now, was there something that inspired you about the formatting of the book? Because I think this is, the thing I can think of closest to this is like leadership for dummies. I don't even know if that exists, <laughs> but, and I don't like the word dummies. I don't like yeah, to even use it, absolutely. but I think it's, it's such a nice layout. You can read it in chunks and you don't have to feel guilty that you haven't polished off a whole chapter. Okay, so here's reflecting on courage, mm. perception of courage, and there's mm. a little lion there, or there's a, a light bulb about the reflections, stories that you were talking about. It's really well laid out. Thank you. And, you know, the thing is, I have to acknowledge you, Sheree, because you were the person that was so critical in being a sounding board. So as most of you, I hope most of the listeners know, and perhaps some of the people who don't know Sheree, who've dialed into this podcast, Sheree and I have both been working in the field of leadership for 30 plus years. And so what was amazing is that Sheree with a PhD in organizational behavior and me with my postgrad degrees in organizational psychology, we would often come together and debate and argue and say, what if, why, da, 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 da. And all of that really enhanced the book so that it could be in a way a very simple playbook. I wanted it to be accessible. Leadership is often so overcomplicated. And, yes, you is. know, for many people, they, you know, if I say to them, oh, okay, you're on a leadership program, they'll say to me, Gina, I'm not even a leader. I don't know why I'm on this program. And some of this <laughs> sort of imposter syndrome comes through, like they're going to be found out. And, mm. you know, we just really wanted to collectively make leadership accessible to everyone. I know it's a bold statement, but for me, having worked as a leadership performance coach and defined leadership models and trained people and worked on all these different styles of leadership, authentic leadership, servant leadership, transformational leadership, transactional leadership, et cetera, a lot of the times people are stuck because they feel like they have to conform to one particular style. And guess what? It's not sustainable. Even if your organization decides that the, the next hot leadership style is authentic leadership, it may work for two, three years, but it's not sustainable. So Impactful Leadership and our book and the way it's formatted was really looking at how is this going to be useful for anyone? Anyone who feels a tug, a little bit of a calling around, how can I make a small difference in my family, in my team, in my communities? How can my ideas or my perspective contribute and land and potentially make an impact and a difference to others? If I hear you correctly, what you're saying is the book is basically for everyone who wants to make a difference and specifically wants to make a difference and step into their leadership shoes. But is there a little bit of a profile of your ideal person who would buy this book either for themselves or for their team yeah. or their whole organization? What does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So I have to go back to who is the ideal person by looking hmm. at the stories of ordinary people who we write about in the book. And what I see 
in working with all those people whose stories landed up in the book, but all those people whose stories didn't land up in the book is there is one thing that they have in common. And what that is, is they are curious around how do I make a little bit more of a difference? How can I have a little bit more of an impact? Or they're asking themselves the question, ultimately, what is my purpose in life? Am I actually being the best that I can be? That's what's common around everybody here. Many of them didn't think, oh, I, I want to actually be a leader. It started off with, I know that I'm capable of more. I wonder what that is. I wonder if my ideas around what things could look like can be heard and possibly make a difference. And so the stories that we write about, the kind of people that we write about, if we take Mel, for example, she just wanted to be a little bit more successful in her career. And working with Cabby, she then realized, actually, her voice and what she has to say makes a difference. And then she started working in her firm's diversity and inclusion committee and landed up chairing that. She now That's runs right. her own firm. So maybe we should also talk about who this book is not for. Oh, that's great. Let's do that. Who should say, I'm not interested and turn us off? Absolutely. Okay. So anybody who is just in a state of, I am going to go to work, I'm going to clock in and I'm going to clock out. Anybody who is showing up in their families and their communities as quiet, detached, and resigned. This is not for you. Okay, so complacency is not, not no. our target audience. No. Right? All right, good. And, you know, Cherie, right now, the world is really in crisis. People are in crisis. I do a lot of work around resilience. And, you know, we are, I hope we sort of midway through COVID at the moment. And so a couple of people have said to me, Gina, I just don't have the energy to even be thinking about leadership and making a difference. I am just surviving. My invitation to you, if you're in that mode at the moment, is to go and have a look at the free preview of our book at cabbymodel.com. And all I want you to do is go and read not the, all the stories, but read the endorsements from people who have worked with the cabbie model and see if any of their endorsements resonate, inspire, talk to you. If it does, then this book is for you. If it doesn't, if it doesn't stir something for you, empower or enable you in a little way then the time is not right the okay. url again because i'll type it into our chat line okay so www.cabbymodel.com so it's cabbymodel.com all right so i've typed that in here cabbymodel.com and that's where people go to be able to have a sample and to be able to check out is this something that speaks to me yeah. and do I need to have this on my bookshelf yeah. or not? Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's our book, Impactful Leadership. It's this book that speaks to anyone who wants to make a difference. If you're somebody out there who wants to make a difference in your life, in your organization, in your family, then you, you got to have the book. You got to read it and you got to write a review on it. Absolutely. So now, there, the book's available in several different formats, I understand. What are they? Yeah. Okay. So right now, the print version and the audio book, the audio book and the print version are available. And dear, dear listeners, the audio book is beautifully, beautifully read by Cherie. So oh. you get Cherie's gorgeous voice. Um 
the expression, um, the love, the passion that we both share around making a difference. So the audiobook is there. Also, if you order the audiobook, I've created the folder that you get is not just each of the audio uh, chapters, but you get a little playlist that's got exactly how long each chapter is. I also give you the extract of the first section, all the endorsements, etc., table of contents, etc. So you get the audiobook. The print book is available off my website, catalysthk.com, and I believe will be on Cherie's website. Yes, absolutely. Catalysthk for Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Is that right? Okay, yeah. so there it is on the chat bar. Yeah. Two things I just want to reinforce www.cabbymodel.com. And the second one is catalysthk.com. You want to take note of that. And as soon as you've finished watching our podcast today, go there, check it out for yourself, for your team, for your organization. Now, Gina, what's your intention after people have read the book? What do you want them to take away with them? All right. I guarantee you won't have takeaways at the end of the book. You will have takeaways in every single chapter. I know it's a bold statement. Why can I say this is because every chapter has got what Sherry referred to and showed you earlier. There are reflection activities and there are exercises. These reflection activities and these exercises come directly out of the coaching both Cherie and I have done around these topics. And I've extracted the best or some of the best exercises that work in a book format that you can use to be able to navigate and develop and define your leadership voice in a way that's unique to you. I think you want to make sure that people don't just jump over reflections and the exercises because they're integral to the experience of reading the book and reflecting on it and doing your homework to be able to make certain that you get maximum benefit out of it. Is that right? Absolutely. And some people have said to me who've read the book, they've said, oh gosh, Gina, you know what? I actually just took that page into the next meeting. This exercise, find your conference call voice. Someone said to me the other day, who's a research analyst, like, he is incredible. He writes beautifully. And he said, but Gina, when I get on these two, three minute conference call morning calls, it goes to hell. And so I just used this one and I just opened it up here, page 48. He said, I used that just before I went onto my conference call and I rocked it. I bet um, that felt great to you when he uh, said, I rocked it. Yeah, it. totally. But that's it. And you know, Cherie, the other thing I just want to highlight, like, honestly, This book is not about me or you. This book tells the stories of people who've been able to use some of our approaches and these exercises and find a path for themselves. And I wanted to write this book to celebrate them. In the acknowledgements, I highlight people, organizations who are really up for a bigger game. And I just still see both you and I as catalysts, as conduits, to that. So this book is really, it's not about me. This is part of the reason why it also took so long to write, because I had to get out of my own way, as you know. And the joy was really writing about when people had breakthroughs from an 11 year old to a 80 year old, you know. Incredible. How great. I know that some of the stories in here have to do with your leadership as a mother, as a business leader, and a catalyst in organizations. And I know that's something that's very close to your heart and raising your kids in a way that allows them to experience leadership at whatever age they are. Could you say just a word or two about parenting from a leadership perspective? I know you could talk about this all day. I was actually conscious of that when you were doing the introduction and there were all these titles and these labels. The essence of this cabbie model and the essence of the work we do, um, it really goes down to the essence of being human. And as a mom, using elements of cabbie, for example, one of the techniques around the confidence piece is just ask the question. And that has been 
way before I wrote about it in the cabbie model, that's been a fundamental principle that both my husband and I have tried to share with our children is to really help them and encourage them to just ask the question, even though they're only nine years old or 11 years old or 21 or whatever that is to just ask the question because incredible things happen. So we're going to, I think, we're going to call that a little uh, acronym called J-A-Q. Just ask the question. Exactly. And you invented that. That's from you. That's right from your heart. And it actually challenges someone to have the courage to do that when they're already rehearsing the fact that the person is going to reject them in the first place. But if you just ask the question, J-A-Q it, yeah. then all of a sudden you're opening a door of possibility that was heretofore shut. Absolutely. And there, there's stories in the book around how one question and often repeated, right, just literally changed the trajectory of someone's life. You know, I, I have my kids who are now both at university. They'll often, they'll kind of, they'll look at me and they'll roll their eyes and they say, yes, I know, mom. Yes, I must just J-A-Q, just ask the question. I'm like, yep. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting close to winding yeah. down and I just want our our listeners and our watchers, our people have tuned into our podcast today to know how they can get a hold of you if they want to. Is it different than what I wrote on the chat bar? Or is it the same? It's the same. First of all, on the book, right at the back here, we've actually got cabbymodel.com and catalysthk.com. If you go to any of those sites or even connect with me on LinkedIn, we really are creating a cabbie, expanded cabbie community. We'd love you to be part of that. We'd love you to be using and continuing to test cabbie and to share your experiences. So, so it's through both of those, what, and it can be know, through what LinkedIn. That, what do they dial in on LinkedIn to find you? Gina Marisha. Okay, so yep. I'm just going to see if I can type that in here. Yeah. Because I want them to be able to find you. Yep, okay. so on Catalyst, on LinkedIn, and just please watch that space and join it because it's actually through people like you that inspire me to collaborate with people like Cherie where we can continue to bring resources and tools and strategies and experiences so that we really can positively impact a more diverse okay. and inclusive leadership voice. I have two more questions for you before we sign off. Number one question is, let's just say, um, we're in the middle of COVID times, yeah. but let's just say somebody said, I really like this concept, this cabbie, and I'd like to bring it into my organization. Besides them buying the book for their team or their mm -hmm. division, or their entire organization, what else can they do to be able to access your knowledge, wealth of experience and expertise? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So what we've got is we've got short webinars on each of the different elements of cabbie. Right. So you can contract us to bring a webinar. You can also contract us to run a train the trainer or a cabbie certification course for your organization. Can you do that online? In three months' time, you're going to be able to do that online. At the moment, it okay. runs live virtually. Okay. And we're right. busy. So it is virtually online that people can access it. Yes. So that's fabulous. And that's a murals, right? Catalyst.com. Yeah. All right, Absolutely. Great. And on page 164 of the book, these are all the ways in which we are looking to build on and support you create communities of cabbie. Ultimately, what I'd love to be able to see is that someday, one day, Cherie, people don't even have to go through me for cabbie. I want cabbie to become what the grow model is for coaching. I want Cabby to become around finding one's leadership voice and anyone who gets trained, coached on authentic impacts and presence automatically uses Cabby. In five, That's 10 great. years so, time, you don't even have to talk to me. <laughs> oh no, they'll want to talk to you. They'll be their privilege to talk with you. So what's next for you, given mm -hmm. that we're in the beginning of 2021 and we have this COVID phenomena, pandemic, mm -hmm. What's next for you, Gina? 
Right now, I continue to, as I have been doing even prior to the book, I continue to run four organizations, leadership programs that have got a strong cabbie component, impact and influence and resilience component. I continue to coach. The most exciting thing, though, is as I'm moving many of our programs, including Mastering Cabbie, online. So it's evergreen and the Catalyst Online Academy should go live in the next three months. Oh, that's so exciting. That really is. I want to thank you. Do you have any final closing words to our audience today? One thing I just want to say is once again to thank you, Shiri, for everything that you do, for being an inspiration, for being, as I said, my Catalyst twin, and really enabling me to take Cabby beyond Catalyst. And the second thing is to the listeners and the readers on your fantastic Dr. Shiri show, I would like to just extend a... Happy New Year greeting, because in actual fact, we're recording this in the Lunar New Year of 2021 on the day. And that ultimately is to always, always go back to what is most important to you now today and never give up on the long term game, the purpose. Know that you live actually a blessed life. And ultimately, you really, really want to be looking at. What is your potential and how do you make a difference in this world? Because you can. Great. Thank you, Gina, for being on my podcast. I so so appreciate it. And we will make certain that this gets populated out there so that everyone can see it and hopefully run to their favorite online purchasing option, going to your website or catalyst.com HK so that they can get their copy of the book because I suspect that the people who listen to my podcast actually want to make a difference. So it's a match to have this book with the people in their hands as their Bible that they carry around with them every single day. So thank you, Gina. Great having thank you, you Sherry. Show. May the world embrace impactful leadership, making a difference and finding your courage, confidence, articulation with impact, their branding and their inquiry presented by Gina Maresha. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sherry. And thank you all for joining me today for the Dr. Sheree show, my podcast. If you like it, please make certain that you sign up for our newsletter so that we can reach you and pass it on to others. Share with the people that you care about. Share with anybody that you know who wants to make a difference. Happy to have you with us. Tune in next time and be good to yourself. Be vigilant, be safe, be healthy, and be your authentic self.